Chris Olock here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I hope you guys are uh, enjoying here as we wrap up the last couple of uh, of parts to the parable of the sheep and the goat. Man, this is good. I mean, Matthew 25. God has just been awesome in what he's been showing us over the last few weeks. Just amazing what the Lord uh, has been revealing, the layers, the meat in this chapter. And so we've been, uh, of course, in the tail end here of Matthew 25. I want to start in verse 42 uh, with you today. Uh, and this is the, the goats have already been told that they're going to be with the fallen angels and the devil. They're going to go into this eternal fire. And Jesus continues to speak about their mindset. And it says, For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, and you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you didn't take care of me. I, you, he is speaking to his people. He is speaking to his people. What is the word of God specific? That my people perish, what? For a lack of knowledge. It is not temporal knowledge. It is eternal knowledge that people suffer from. It is a lack of understanding in the spirit that is where people perish. Jesus said, I came to bring water in which you would never thirst from. I came to bring you food in which you would never be hungry again. Right? The bread of life. And, and the, the living water of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's speaking to. So these people think they have a relationship with him. And he's telling them, no, you don't. And this is why. And we were talking about this the last couple of days. That there is a temporal level that the Lord is speaking to. And there's also a spiritual level that the Lord is speaking to. Both, both function in the spirit and in, in, in uh, the temporal. But the spiritual is a ministry standpoint, not the action of feeding and giving people something to drink, but to actually feed them with living bread and living water. And to take Jesus in, to say that he was a stranger. If you're not functioning in the spirit and Jesus walks in the room, it's going to be a strange thing that happens in that place. So many people are like, oh, we know the presence of God. I have traveled around the globe. The one question, excuse me, the one question that always gets asked before uh, the ministries that I've traveled with or, or now my ministry as it, as it goes around is, do you all function in the Holy Spirit? And as I continue to travel around the world, we always get the answer, yes. The Holy Spirit is there every Sunday. And then the ministry comes in and the presence of God starts to heal and deliver people and people start to prophesy and people start to encounter the Lord. They start to hear his voice in a new way. All of this, and, and a lot of times very gentle, okay? It, it's not always the production that we think it is. For those of you who are not so familiar with it, sometimes it comes really gentle, sometimes not so gentle. But people, the pastors are always like, what is this? And we're like, it's the Holy Spirit. Oh. There are so many minimaking spirits out there, and people have bought into them because they feed into the flesh. They play with the depraved reality. And, the, and people are delusional enough to say, hey, we're not going to use the Word of God to discern what this is. No, this, this works out nicely. This isn't running anybody out. This actually coincides with what the people already think and believe. I've said this many times, unfortunately. It's a very unpopular thing when I say it, and the Lord leads me to say it. Not as much anymore as I used to, but he used to bring me into all kinds of pastors' conferences and other things. And I would always sit with one pastor that would start to talk about the dryness in their atmosphere or the, 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 the lack of the presence of God. And I, the Lord would always lead me to, the, to say the same thing, and I hated saying it because I knew what the reaction was going to be wasn't going to be positive. person was going to like what, I, what the Lord was telling me to say, but I was obedient with it. And I'd always have to share. Don't delude yourself. If you don't see the evidence of the presence of God working in your church, you don't feel the presence of God, you're not hearing the presence of God in your church, there is not an activeness of the Spirit of Jesus, don't delude yourself. 
He's not there. And there's many places that delude themselves and continue to delude themselves that he is there. And Jesus is saying, I was a stranger and you refused. He's saying you refused to take me in. And you didn't take me in. You refused to take me in. Oof. To be to reject Jesus. And then you don't have oil in the end. And you have to go back and get the oil. And when you knock on the door, Jesus looks and says, I never knew you. I don't know who you are. Verse 44. Then they will go, they will, then they too will answer, Lord, when did you when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? We don't know what you're talking about. We, we, we did all the things that Matthew 25 says to do. And he says, No, you didn't. Because you did do it on a spiritual level. Your motive was not to function in the spirit, it was only to function out of the flesh, which you could understand and already comprehend. Verse 45, then he will answer them, I assure you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me either. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This implies that these people are unrighteous by what they were in refusal to do. Under the new covenant, there is one unforgivable sin, which is the refusal of the Holy Spirit. To refuse the promise of heaven that God has sent. Well, if you refuse heaven, then there's only one place to go. The Holy Spirit. I want you to understand this. The Holy Spirit is received through the righteousness of Christ. It says that Jesus is the baptizer. We call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is what we receive. Jesus himself is the baptizer. We lay hands filled, those of us who are anointed, with the anointing of Jesus, we lay hands in faith, asking Jesus to baptize the individual we lay hands on. And that's why the fire comes, is the fire is not representative, it is the righteousness of Christ. And then you receive the Holy Spirit, not as well, but instantaneously. The righteousness of God must come to, to, to fulfill so that the Holy Spirit can dwell. And when we Pass through the fires, we shall not be burned. Why? Because the righteousness of Christ is within us, and we have been filled with the Holy Spirit for the purpose of not only communication, but obedience to fulfill the Word of God and to demonstrate the goodness and the power of the one true Almighty God. Hallelujah. One more part to go, and it's going to be good. Be blessed.